Hello, welcome to Ecoholics. Let us understand the Kuno equilibrium. Again, this is a very important topic for most competitive exams. We'll be delving into the reaction curve approach. We'll also be solving a numerical but in another video. So keep watching our channel. First of all, the Kuno model is used in a market structure known as oligopoly. An oligopoly is a market structure in which very few firms exist. The word oligopoly, uh, oligo has its root in the word few. Also, we must remember that here there are barriers to entry and the most defining factor in this market structure is that the firms are extremely interdependent on the other firm's behavior for all their decisions. For example, decision pertaining to prices, quantity, advertising and such decisions to be made by a firm. So here, often the competition level is high and the firms are extreme, extremely rival to each other. So, um, yeah, additionally, there are also a small number of firms and each firm's profit level depends on all the other firms behavior too. So, in oligopoly, we do have collusive and non-collusive models and within the non-collusive or competitive models, the first model we cover is the Cournot model given by a French economist, Augustin Cournot. Now, uh, this is a very widely used model and there are certain assumptions that we must remember and we can also define the model through the same. This non-collusive oligopoly model here, the firms produce A, homogeneous goods. Also, the firm treats the output of its competitors as fixed. This is the most important defining characteristic of Kuno model. The firm treats output of competitors as fixed. Also, firms will simultaneously decide what output they will be producing. Kuno is a quantity setting model. So here the firms will be making their decisions with respect to quantity to be produced and not the price level. And the quantities will be decided simultaneously. Simultaneously means that the quantity decided by firm A will be decided independently, but at the same time, B will also be formulating its own quantity again independently. So this is a non-collusive, but simultaneously firms will take action with respect to quantity. The essence or what we also call as the Kuno assumption. This is also true for the Bertrand model. Here, each firm treats the output level. In the Bertrand, we have price level. So here in Kuno, each firm treats output level of its competitor as fixed when deciding how much to produce. We must remember these essential qualities and now we can move ahead. So, in order to utilize the reaction curves, we first have to be familiar with the derivation of the same and the first concept we do is the isoprofit curve. What is an isoprofit curve? Whenever the word iso comes, it simply means same. So, the curve which is depicting same profit or equal level of profit for the firm in question, given the quantities set by both the firms, both the rival firms together, that will be the isoprofit curve. An isoprofit curve for a firm is the locus of points defined by different levels of own output and his rival firm's output. So we have two outputs simultaneously and that one output by one firm will yield to the firm same level of profit. This is concave in shape specifically for substitute goods and we can also see that the isoprofit curves as they are closer to the axis the profits shown are higher. We will be depicting the same through a graph for better clarity. 
But before that, theoretically, let us understand the reaction curves. Reaction curves are nothing but locus of the points of highest profit. So this is how we generally depict our isoprofit curve. And here we also have quantity produced by firm A, quantity by firm B along the entire isoprofit curve of firm A, we have quantities of the two firms and the profit levels remain the same. Now, if I take the maximum point or the highest point of this curve and I additionally formulate more isoprofit curves and mark the first or the highest point and make a straight line from the same, I get what we call as the reaction curve. So this is the reaction curve of firm A. What does a reaction curve tell us? It tells us that whenever quantity produced by the firm B is going to be say this much, the quantity that will be made by firm A will be this much. So this is the quantity purchased by the first, uh, made by the first firm or firm A whenever the quantity set by the firm B is going to be QB, right? So here uh, we've covered this very important concept. Also, it is very important for a stable Kuno equilibrium that A's reaction curve is steeper than B's reaction curve. We have the mathematical depiction of both the curves. So here we have A's reaction curve. So here we have the isoprofit curve 1, 2, 3, 4. As we are moving away from the x-axis, the profits of firm A are falling down. So the closer we are to the axis, we are actually able to produce, the, rather the firm A is able to produce much more which allows him to get a higher profit and therefore we say that closer the isoprofit curve is to the axis, higher the profit this firm will get and we get a steep reaction curve for firm A. Similarly for firm B, we have a similar depiction through the isoprofit curves of firm B. So here we have uh, the profit curve 1, two, three, four, and again, closer we are to the axis, the higher profits firm B is getting. So, Kuno equilibrium, how do we reach this equilibrium? Simply put, whenever the two curves, reaction curves of firm A and B intersect each other, we reach the Kuno equilibrium. Now, let us derive the Kuno equilibrium through the reaction curves. So, if this is the isoprofit map for firm B, here we have IB1, IB2, IB3, and we also have the highest profit points. We join the profit points here, and the straight line that we get is the reaction curve of firm B. Now, to know the reaction curve of firm A, we will draw the isoprofit map for firm A, select the highest points on the isoprofit curves, join the points and draw a straight line which is the reaction curve of firm A. The point of intersection here is what we call as the Kuno equilibrium. So here, through the use of graphs, we have easily found out the Kuno equilibrium. And now we can conclude the entire discussion. A Kuno equilibrium leads to each firm maximizing its own level of profit, but considering that here the behavior is competitive 
and not collusive. Considering that the firms understand that their behavior makes a difference on the other firm's profits, the willingness not to collude leads to lower joint profits or lower industry profits. So a Kuno profit of the industry will always be lower than the joint profit of the industry. Whereas each firm will be maximizing its own output here or profit here. Also, we have to remember that the Kuno pattern or what we call as the Kuno assumption essentially says that firms do not learn from their past behavior. Here the firms have understood that even when they're going ahead with a competitive uh, equilibrium and they are keeping the behavior of the other firm as constant, this behavior is leading to lower profits for the firms. Still, going ahead with this behavior leads to continued lower profits and this is what we are calling as naivety in the case of Kuno model. So Kuno pattern implies that firms do not learn from past behavior and each expect the other firm to remain at its own previous level. So this ends the discussion on Kuno equilibrium. We will be continuing with the numerical on the same topic. So please like our channel, subscribe and share the same. Have a good day. Thank you.